Thank you, Father, for today, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you would bless this house, Father, and everybody in it, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you would take us to new depths, Father, that you would take us to new places in the Spirit, Father, that you would take us to see new things, Father. Give us of the hidden manna, Father, for your hidden manna is designated for a certain people, Father. Your hidden manna is designated for a certain group, Father, a certain type of people that are not selling out to Baal, Father, a certain type of people that are not giving into the idolatry worship of Jezebel, Father, a certain type of people that are not giving into the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, a certain type of people that are not lukewarm and are hot for you, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that there is a remnant even amongst the remnant, Father. And the hidden knowledge and the hidden manna from heaven will come to them, Father. And it will be as sweet as honey in their mouth, but it will be bitter in their stomach. And they will prophesy and they will speak in other tongues of man. And they will speak words that no man has ever heard and no man has ever seen, Father. And it will go amongst all the earth, Father. And they will set the inhabitants of the earth, those that are willing to bow their knee to God. They will be set free, Father. The 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal, they shall come forth and they shall not be hidden anymore. Father, and they shall come to the light, and all shall see who the true church of Jesus Christ is, who the true sons and daughters are. The world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. If you're not ready for it, you better be ready because we're about to come upon the time where they should be revealed, where the hidden church amongst the churches shall be revealed, the one that doesn't have its candlestick taken away, because six churches shall have their candlestick taken away, but one church shall prevail. The church of Philadelphia, that, the, that they will come back and they will bow, they will come at, the, at their feet and they will kiss they will even bow their knee to them all the other churches all the other brothers all the other tribes they will come to joseph in the last day and they will seek because there will be a famine in the land and they will come to be filled because they hunger and because they thirst and israel will come to his son and then he shall he shall be filled and all the inhabitants of the land of israel all the inhabitants of the church and i thank you father that we are the church we are the israel of god we are grafted into the tree and others have been cut down, but, it, but God is able to restore them if they would come to Christ. But we are now that tree. We are now that wild olive tree that has been grafted into the, to the vine, Father. And we are in your wine press. We are the wheat that you throw in your wine press that will be poured out onto all the earth and we will speak your judgments, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. This message is called The Rejected Brother and the Hidden church and god has shown me that he's shown you know what he's shown me about this message that we're going to go we're going to go deep into our future as the body of christ today because many of us don't even know what is even going on now or has gone on for many years or has or is going to happen and many of us get hopeless and many of us get down because we don't know what our we don't have a future what does it say that that, that scripture about the vision if, if a man does not have vision he will tarry away I, don't, I, may not, I may be paraphrasing there, but there's a vision, and that vision that we have is for the body of Christ, and that vision is in this house because we will help forerun that vision to the body of Christ. The apostolic church will forerun the last move of God. They will bring in the man-child that will have a strong iron, uh, uh, iron uh, I forget exactly how, what it says. It, has, it will have strong iron, and it will be exalted among the nations. It will have power over the nations. A man-child. And why is it called a man-child? Because there will be, the last generation believers, there will be young and old in the Lord. I'm not talking about young and old in the flesh. Young and old that will be raised up by an apostolic mother. The mother that has 12 stars around her head will give birth to. And it's coming out of the wilderness right now, even as we speak. And it says the dragon will war against this mother. The dragon will war against this child. But the child will be caught up in the heavens with God, in the temple of God. And the, and the dragon will be wroth with the woman, with the woman with the 12 stars, will be wroth with the apostolic church because of the work that's going to be accomplished in what God's doing. And we're going to be a part of it. This house, even us, are going to be a part of the big move of God, the big apostolic push of God for running the church, the 12 tribes, to its destiny and to its place, to being called the new Jerusalem of God. And we're going to go through the story of Joseph because... We don't even realize that Joseph is, is a type and a shadow of the church of Jesus Christ. Not just him, but him and his 12 brothers. And there's something about Joseph's life that resembles something that's going on now. And how there's a remnant church and there's also harlot churches. And then there's seven types of churches. There's seven types of, of, of assemblies of God that, 
some that are, are defiling their, their, that are soiling their garments, some that are giving in the Jezebel, some that are giving into the, into the works of the Nicolaitans, some that won't be sold out, that will be sold out until the end, that, won't, uh, that will endure their persecution and will be thrown in jail but will still endure, and then some that will have little strength but they will hold on and endure till the end. But there's one church out of all of them, and, it, and it, you can even see it in, our, in the shadow of the book of the seven churches, that there's one church that there's no blame on them. There's no Jezebel, there's no Nicolaitans, there's no, no works of, of, of the flesh, anything like that. And they were, they were blameless in the sight of God. And he said, hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come and I will give you garments as white. And we're going to get there. But as we see that, we're going to see this one church, this one body of people that are of God. And then there's other bodies of people that are of God that may be doing wrong things. But there's also going to be two people that are that come to the judgment of God in the end, and one, their works are burned by fire, and one whose works stand still. But they both will be saved, but one will stand, and, and the others will serve the one, and the younger and the older will serve the younger. The, old, the older generation, the old wine, will give in to the new wine. The older generation will give in to the younger generation. Not the younger generation of kids, but the new generation of believers that have childlike faith, that will not become old in the spirit, but they will stay young and hear what thus saith the Lord always and lay at his feet, not be Martha, but be Mary before the Lord. And this is the apostolic church that will be childlike, that will be the child, the man-child. Genesis 32, 24 through 28. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of days. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was not on a joint and as he wrestled with him. He said, Let's, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let, let go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be, shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. See how Jacob now is called Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. So Jacob now wrestles with God and is now called Israel, and he has now 12 sons, and he's called Israel. So God is doing a type and a shadow here. He got, Jacob is Israel, and, and 12, and the, and the rest, and the brothers are the inhabitants of Israel. The diff, 12 different types of brothers. I mean, there's there's going to be two different types of brothers that are, that are different from the rest. Luke 1:32 through 33, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. See, the house of Jacob is still standing. The house of Jacob is, 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 God, is his church, is Israel, his church. He will stand with them forever. There will, no, there will one day no longer be a land of Israel that is exalted by people. It will be the church. Even it says in the book of Revelations that the new Jerusalem, some guy tried to argue me and say, oh, the new Jerusalem is... is because it calls the New Jerusalem the bride of, of Christ, the bride of God. Look at the bride coming down from the heavens to now be wed God. This is God's wife here. But then it says, and this is those that have come out of the great tribulation, that have not defiled their garments. So what he's doing, he's calling his church the New Jerusalem that he shall dwell with. He's calling his church the bride. We are now going, coming from down from heaven, the going to be the New Jerusalem that he inhabits, that inhabits his praises. And it, said, and, it, and it says that the kingdom of Jacob, will, he will reign over forever. So forever means forever. So then people in the Jewish roots, they say, well, the kingdom of Jacob's here and we're trying to find, you know, the lost tribes of Israel and we're trying to get them all together and there's some here and there's some there. But no, what it's saying is it's revelation to, for you to understand. No, now you are now the house of Jacob because you are, are called by my name. You are my people. You are now the Israel of God. You are now the Jacob by God. For it is not the ones that are Jews in the flesh, but the ones that are Jews that are circumcised in the heart by God. This is now the new Israel is you. And we will, shall be grafted in. And, those, and the Jews that, that come to know Christ shall be one with us. And we shall be two witnesses before the throne of God. Genesis 37 through 34, 3 through 4. Now let's get into the story. Now Israel loved Joseph. This is key here. There's something about that Jacob had. He had a love for Joseph that was more than, he loved all his sons, but he loved Joseph more than, the, more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him, him a tunic of many colors. And we know that a tunic represents a form of covering, or you could say 
In, in Joseph's case, it was the apostolic, the spirit of God, the ministry of God resting on Joseph. Called, given to him before his, his purpose was even fulfilled. Given to him before he was even thrown into his trials. And there's a good teaching that I think Marlene did. It's called the code of many trials. Because with the big calling comes the big persecution. With the big calling comes the, the scoffing of the other brothers. Comes the scoffing of all the other Christians. The ones that, sell, that call themselves Christ. Jealousy, jealousy shall erupt from this one who has the coat of many colors. From this type of church. Other, the other churches shall come against him in jealousy. And that's what happened with the brothers of Joseph. They came against Joseph in jealousy. There was hate that he gets to be blessed with all these things. He gets to be blessed with, with, this, with this coat of many colors that we want. But there's something about Joseph that he saw. And then there was dreams that Joseph had where the 11 sheaves that they had were bowing down to his sheaf. And then there was another dream where the sun and the moon and, all, and the 11 stars of heaven, they bowed to Joseph. The 11 stars of heaven, the 11 brothers, the sun and the moon. The, and then God sh gave me a revelation about the sun and the moon long ago. He, and he told me that the sun is, is, like, is, like the, is like Christ. That's why it's, it's funny that it's called the sun. And then the moon is like is like the church, is like the bride. One is the greater light and one is the lesser light, and the one greater light shines through the lesser light to illuminate the world, even in the midst of darkness. The sun, the sun and the bride and the rest of the children of Israel shall bow before this one star, the twelfth star, Joseph, twelve being apostolic, shall bow, shall come, not bow as in worship, but bow as in serve, as in give in to. Isaiah 60, 14 through 16. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall be bending unto thee, and all, all they despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of my feet. They shall all come in the last day, and they, sh they will bow. This is a prophecy about the last day, that they will bow at the soles of your feet. And actually, I didn't want to bring the whole, too much in here. There's a lot I could bring in here, but we don't have you know, the whole day to go through all this. But it actually was talking about the Gentiles that will come and inhabit. And the, and the ones that were not called my people will now be called my people. And the ones that were strangers will now build my walls. And then it goes into say to those people, the sons also of them that afflicted you, the ones who have persecuted you. And how many know that in the church, the church actually persecutes the church more than the world. The church is actually its worst persecutor because we're, the church, the people of God are supposed to know better. And even Jesus' own people persecuted him. And those were, even in Jesus' time, they were the worst persecutors. Even though, you know, uh, the Romans and, and the king, they, didn't, they were even actually trying not to kill him. But the, the Jews, they insisted to kill him. They wanted, they wanted him, his blood, his own people. The one that he came down to save came against him. And just as it was in that day, shall it be in this day, that the ones that God has called us to forerun and save, they will scoff. They will come against. They will reject. This is, this is why you're going through the, the things that we're going through. This is why, where, where, where we've, what we've been going through. And we've been seeing the apostolic church, the ministry of God, the ministry that, cover, that, is, that is full, that, govern, that is called to govern in the church, has been rejected before man, has been rejected by its own people. God has sent down a, 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 a temple, a measurement, and how he wants it to be and, the, and, the, and its own people that, that it was for has rejected it. And now we're seeing people that are not your typical church folk. They don't have a background in church. They don't have a background as with their daddy being the pastor. But they've come because they've bro been broken. They've been wounded and they've been Gentile. But now God has took them in because they are willing to just serve God. There's no birthright. There's no, well, I was born and I'm Israelite or I'm, I'm the pastor's son and I'm the, you know, this or that, or, you know. So you should look to me because of that reason, because of my birth, because of my blood. No, but now we're grafted in because of his blood. There's no longer any birthrights or any of this. Now our birthright is in the Son of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, co-heirs with him in his lordship and authority over the earth. That, and they shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord. See, the city of the Lord, Jerusalem. But it, and, it, and it also says, the, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man, 
Though thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency and joy of many generations. Many generations. Was it talking about just that generation? It was talking about many generations. You see a lot of these things where it says forever and ever. It's, it's talking about the forever and ever. It's talking about now us. We're the forever and ever. And then we will dwell with God forever and ever. If, it was ta- if, it, if these things were just for them back then, it would just say for a time or until this happens or until the Son of Man happens. But it says the house of Jacob, Israel, forever and ever. Ever and ever. But those that with, without revelation will still try to serve God with the old wine, with the old wineskins, and still try to go back to a nation and still try to, to find Jacob's inhabitants and say, oh, okay, now I can be grafted in. That's all flesh. That's revelation that we must get. Whereas thou has been forsaken and hated, I will make thee an eternal excellency joy. Though thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shalt suck the breasts of the kings, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord your Savior and Redeemer. And the mighty one of the Jacob, of Jacob, Revelation 3, 8 through 13. I know thy works, and I behold, I have set thee before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast deni- not denied my name. I will make thee a synagogue of Satan, which though, say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship at your feet. See, the same prophecy that was way in the book of Isaiah is now in Revelation, he's telling the church, I will tell, I will call those, the ones that call themselves apostles, the ones that, not only the ones that call themselves apostles, but the ones that call themselves Christian even, the one that calls themselves servant, the ones that calls themselves sons of God, they will even come, the ones that were far from me, from, they were far from me from the heart, but their mouth, they, was, they were close. I will come and they will come and even bow in the last day. In the book of Revelation, it even says, to the ones that, that won't give in to the works of the Nicolaitans, to the ones that won't give in but it says they left their first love. But our promise, if we, keep, if we keep fast until the end, if we keep the sun until the end, if we keep our first love, is this, is that the 11 brothers will come and bow to the one, but the, 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 the other one will not. And even you'll see in this story how the other ones say, well, now Joseph turned against us now because of all that we did to him. But no, he blesses them. And he gives them, he gives them all the inhabitants, the, the, the good and the fat of the land of Egypt. And gives them all the grain because there was a famine in the land in Egypt. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a famine in this land. And the land's abroad. And I'm not talking about just food. I'm talking about spiritual food. The voice, in the, in the, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride will no longer be heard in the harlot. That's what the book of Revelation says. No longer will the voice of the bridegroom and the bride be heard. But now the, the harlot will become a habitation of devils. The religious system will fall. There will still be a religious system in a sense, but it will be known to the world that these people are crazy. Look at all the devils. Even the world will see the devils that inhabit because it says that land and sea, kings and rulers will see the fall of Babylon, the great, the harlot, the mother of harlots, the, one, the, the woman that rides the beast. And they will see that, is, that it is definitely not of God. There's people in the world that can see who's of God. They look at some of these churches and they laugh and they say, really? They don't even believe, but they see that it's obviously just all men. The world can see things. God shows them things. How people that call themselves godly are not ungodly. And many of them know scriptures from the Bible. And then they, call, they see them and then they, say, and they, they, they laugh at them. They, they're even discerning. But they will see that ch- God is raising up the sons and daughters to be manifest to the world. That all, that's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for the real church of Jesus Christ. They're waiting for real Christians to actually say, to do what they say and manifest what they believe. That's what the world is waiting for, for real Christians from the real Bible that have not distorted the Bible, that has not added to the Word, that have not taken away from the Word, that is really Christ on earth. That's what the world is waiting for. You. This is our future. Our future is not just hell and damnation. I tell you what, even if we do have to go on the ground, God is still going to be doing this, that what He is saying He's going to do, even on the ground in the world, we'll still see. But that's why it says the kings of the earth will scoff at the bride. They will come against her because of the glory that is bestowed on her. Genesis 37 through 21, 21 through 31. But Reuben heard and he delivered him, him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit which is in the wilderness and do not lay a hand on him. And then God was showing me that there's some that they would like to still be on both sides. They would like to come into God's real ministry of God and real remnant, but still be partnered with 
those that are playing the harlot and they want to be in the middle. They want to say, oh, the, those guys over there, they're cool, they're good. Let's not hurt them. But let's, I'm still going to be with them over here. I'm still going to be with, play harlot with them. And then there's the ones that they come, they want to kill us. They, their jealousy, their jealousy has burned them. Just like Cain has come against Abel, they want the blood of Abel. They want the blood of the, of the sons and daughters of God that have not wrinkled or spotted their garments. It's a big thing in the book of Revelation. Everybody has garments, you see, in the book of Revelation. But he says the ones that have not spotted them, the ones that have not soiled them, the ones that have not wrinkled them. See, you may have a wedding garment on. You may not even be like the one that doesn't have, comes to the wedding feast and doesn't have a wedding garment. You may have a wedding garment on, but have you soiled your wedding garment? Have you... Have you ate at Jezebel's table? See, we can't go from church to church to church and eat at different tables and receive all these different doctrines. That's the harlot. When he talks about adultery and all these things in the book of Revelation, he's not even talking about actual adultery. He's talking about fornicating with other gods and other idols and, and teachers of Jezebel that will teach you and get you to serve yourself or get you to serve your own idols. Hey, go ahead. Go after your own dream. Go after what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll, they'll pat you on the back and they'll be like an Osteen to you. And they'll say, they'll say smooth words and soothing words and they'll say peace, 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 but there is no peace. This is the church that is out there that God is coming against. And, try, and he's saying to the, everybody that's, that's being engulfed in the harlot, come out of her, my people. That's what he says in, in the book of Revelation to those that are still in the, in the harlot. Come out of her. And the, and the call of the, of the bride right now is come out of her, my people. Come out of the system that has controlled you, that has manipulated you, that has taken you under its man-pleasing and money doctrine uh, ways that has come to siphon you just for its own attention and its own glory and its own gain. That's what, God, what, the, what the bridegroom is called to do. But there's a bride that is really without spot or wrinkle, a, a bride that the gates of hell does not prevail against it, that God is raising up now for the people to come, that they would actually become a part of the real body of Christ, a part of the real thing. Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit of the wilderness, and don't, do not lay hand on him, that he might deliver him out of, out of their head, hands, and bring him back to his father. Bring him back to Israel. Bring him back to the church. They're one of us still. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brother, they stripped Joseph of his tunic. And God was showing me that they would like to strip us of what we're called, what's called on our life. They would like to strip true apostles. They would like to strip two, true sons of what's on their life. They can't literally do it because God, no man can take away what God has established, but they would do it by their mouth and curse what God has blessed so that no one would come to their inhabitation, that nobody would come to their lands. That nobody would come to the lands where Joseph has, have, has, has established with his sons. Favor. 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 That they would not come under, like Shane said, like the, under the favor on Joseph's life. Because it's called jealousy, like Cain and Abel. Like Cain and Abel. Like Esau and Jacob, so it shall be in this day. There shall be two that call themselves of God and one is going to come against the other. And it's already been happening. It's happening right now. And it'll be happening until God has this time to take the, what is hidden to the light. The hidden church right now. There is a, an apostolic church that is not even, that the world is not even recognized. That the church, that the church in a mass scale has not even recognized. That doesn't even want to hear. That they, their words are out there. Their voice is being, is being shouted on the rooftops. But they're putting their, their hands in their mouth and saying, or on their ears and saying, no, I don't, I'm not hearing that. Nope, I, I still want to serve these guys. They're, t they're still catering to my, my idols. Nope, nope, nope. The two witnesses come, breathing down fire from heaven. Nope, nope. And then everybody rejoices when they die. But then everybody gets scared when they get raised. And they feel like they have us dead now. But then God is going to raise us to the forefront again. And for the whole world to see. The hidden church. Joseph was the hidden brother. He was taken away from his brothers, put in a, in, in a pit, then goes to Potiphar's house. Then his wife frames him. Potiphar's wife frames him for fornicating with her apparently, but she just took, all she did was take his garment and then show the, the other men in the house and they put him in jail. Joseph was hidden from Israel 
for a long time, for 13 years in jail and however many, many other years that made up the other years. This is what's, what's, what has even happened now. There's been a hidden church from Israel, from the church, that the church doesn't see, that the church doesn't know about, that is hard to find, that is in the midst of the thread, but is hidden. That is hidden and that is rejected. Just like Joseph was rejected, so are, are these firebrands rejected before all the other brothers. But amongst all the brothers in Israel, Joseph is still the favorite child. He may, be, he may have gone through the pit. He may have gone through the jails, but he's in a pit. And, and the number 13, the funny thing about the jails, the number 13 represents rebellion. And obviously Joseph had no gall in his mouth. Joseph had, didn't, wasn't, had no sin in his life necessarily, but rebellion against, it was rebellion against Joseph because Joseph was framed. And just as they framed Joseph and just as they put Joseph in jail, and have locked them up for the, from the rest of the church, so they are doing now. So they have done right now to God's remnant. They have framed them, said, look at his garment. Look at his tunic. We got it. We got the same gift. Come over here. But it's still in a harlot's hand. It's still in the one that wanted to fornicate, that had fornication in her heart. Eventually her, her sins will be found out. The tunic of many colors that was on him, they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down and ate in the meal, and, and they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites. And Ishmaelites, we know the story of Ishmael, that Abraham walked in fear for a moment because he thought God wouldn't, wouldn't prosper what his prophecy said, and he tried to make his own child. And now Ishmael created his own nation of rebellion, and the Ishmaelites ended up becoming the, the Muslims, and ended up becoming the Islamic nations way in the future now. It's funny how that is, huh? And they're the most rebellious. It's the most rebellious thing out there right now. And they come. Let us give them over to the persecutors. Let us give them over. And we know that that sect of religion is the most, is the most persecuting of against God's people. And they wanted to give them over. And just like they, in these last days, they're going to want to give us over. To the devil. They're going to want to give us over to the Antichrist. They're going to want to give us over to the, to the persecutors. Say, here, they're the ones. They're the ones that are defiling uh, your ban. They're the ones that won't, that are, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that won't bow. Look, they're right here. Get them. They're breaking the law. They're not obeying Romans 13. Oh, you said not to preach. Look, they're preaching in the streets. Get them now. And they're, and they're going to do all in the name of Romans 13. They're going to do it all in the name of the word and say, we're Christians too, but we know that they're false Christians. Look, they're not obeying. Just as they did to Joseph, they're doing now. Those that call themselves Christians are coming against those that are really Christians. Those that are really sons. Just like Esau even came against Jacob when he got the blessing and what that Esau was supposed to get. But Esau was the one that sold out. And now the one who sold out to the devil, who fornicated with the devil, now wants to avenge his own, his own thing that he wanted, his own ministry that he wanted, and now is coming after the ones that has it, the ones that are blessed, the ones that have the favor on their life. So Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there if we kill our brothers and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Let, us, let not our hand be upon him. He is, he is our brother. He is our flesh. And his brothers listen. Then the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and pulled him out of the pit, sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit. And indeed, Joseph was not in the pit. And he tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more. And, wh and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of goats. See, you know, you got the sheep and the goats, and everybody knows the sheep are, are spiritually called, are really his, the ones that follow the shepherd, and the goats are the false sheep, the ones that try to seem to be uh, sheep, but they're not. And they put, the, the, they killed a kid of goats, they killed the goat, and they dipped the tunic in its blood. See, we're supposed to be covered in the blood of the lamb. Then they said, sent the tunic of many colors and they brought it to the father and said, we have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And they came to Israel, the church, and said, look, here's his coat. It's, it's dipped in, he's, he's, he's a goat. 
That's what they're doing spiritually to us. It's dead. Look. Look at the goat. The, the, it's, not, it's not the blood of the lamb. It's the blood of goats. And they will try to frame us. They will try to call the real church goats, the real church, because of jealousy. But really the goats are calling the sheep goats and the sheep are calling the goats goats, but it only takes discernment to see who is who. That's why the most, one of the most important gifts in the last day is going to be the gift of discernment because that's the only way we can know who's who. You can see somebody who knows all the truth, who can recite all the things in the Bible, but it says even the devils know the word. Even the devils know ABCs of Christianity. But it'll take by what spirit do they come? And even then, there was Paul casting out demons, and then there was those that were using God's name, like Shane said, God's name to cast out demons. Not even miracle signs and wonders approve you as Christian. They may be fruits, but the only thing that will prove you as son, it says that you will bear, shall bear witness that you are the sons of God. And when we come around a true brother or sister, even if they're in error, because there will be brothers and sisters that are brothers and sisters, but they're in error. But we will know that they are brothers and sisters because it will bear witness by the Spirit that they are spirit and they are of the Spirit. See, we can't, that's what's going on. We have a poison ass tree out there that is saying, well, if they're doing this, they're not, of, they're not Christians. Well, if they're doing that, they're not Christians. Well, oh, they got all, everything right except this one part in Genesis 7 or Corinthians 52, or that's not even a scripture, I'm just saying they will say, look, this one thing they're not doing right, this one thing they're not saying right. But literally, they're the ones that don't even have the Spirit of God. They're just Bible knowers. They're just Bereans that know the Word. They've studied to show themselves approved, but they're still not approved before God. They're only approved before man that has been befooled and beguiled, that has been bewitched. Because many will, will only see, because if you come to a lot of baby Christians right now, and you recite the whole Word, they'll think you're an on-fire Christian. They don't know. They don't have discernment. So they will come to you, and say, blah, 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 this, that, and the third, and you'll believe them. And, and we've all been there as, as young Christians. We don't know. We're still growing in our discernment, so we approve them because, by flesh. But Paul said, no, no man by flesh, but by the Spirit. No, no man by the Spirit. That's how we know who is of God and who's not. It's not about their Bible knowledge that they're of God. And that's where we're at right now in the body of Christ is by Bible knowledge and Bible uh, uh, understandings of, in the flesh, we have called ourselves teachers and preachers and pastors and apostles and even prophets. But they are not apostles and prophets. And, says they will, and it says to, he says to the real church that are not giving to the works of niggas, I will show you the apostles that call themselves apostles but are not, and they will bow at your feet. Genesis 42, 6 through 7. Now Joseph was a governor over the land. And God has established a government of God that has rested upon the shoulders of Jesus. Apostles govern in the church. They lead, they pursue, they overtake, they, they receive everything that is for the body of Christ, and they are stewards. God, that's what God showed me also about apostles and even a prophet. They are stewards of the flow of God to the church of Jesus Christ. That's why it takes there does need to be submission to an apostle and prophet. There does need to be submission to the fivefold ministry. Or else you are not, it is not the ministry of God. And there may be ministries that are preaching truth that, may, that are not fivefold, that are not apostolic, that are not prophetic, that God is still using because of the lack of ministry that we have in the lands. But that doesn't mean it's his ministry still either. He's just using them like jawbone of a donkey. He's using them. But there's going to be a day where God, he's going to, he's going to not only show his servants as approved before God, but he's also going to show it in power. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. These apostles, these prophets, this, this apostolic church is going to be revealed to the world in power, in signs and wonders following like the Bible says. How can we have signs and wonders that don't follow some believers? Because they, they think the signs and wonders have perished and they're done away with, so they can't follow them. That's the, that'll be their, their uh, dispute with you. Well, the signs and wonders have ceased, so I believe still. Yeah, they believe the word, but they don't believe the word. Jesus, the word. They don't know. They know the word, but they don't know the word. See, people say, well, I know the word, but do you know the word? Do you know the man who is the word? Because the word was before the word. It says that Jesus was before the foundations of the earth. He was the word of God, and he was already 
There was a word before the earth was even, when, but when the earth was being formed, the word was already there. Was the book there? No. Was the book there? Even, even when Paul and all, they were writing the book. Abraham and all, they were writing the book. They were, the, the written word of God is a testimony of the living word of God. So I don't care how much you know the word. Do you know the word, the man? Do you know the being? Do you know the spirit? Do you know the, the living epistle that dwells before men? And it's not just the men. It's also the spirit of God. He is the word manifested to you in the flesh. He comes with the, with the seven spirits, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge. And he comes and he brings the word, the mind and heart of God to you. The word is the mind and heart of God. And now it has been formed into a man. And that man is amongst us in spirit now. He said, I will, I will go up, but I will come back to you. I will send the helper, the Holy Spirit. But we know that the Holy Spirit was his spirit. So he was saying, I'm going to come back to you, but I'm not going to come back to you how I am right now. But I will come back to you how I am in the spirit. I will come back to you in another form. That's why it separates the two in that sense. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, because it's the different forms of him. Just as a man is, how a man has a body, mind, and soul is the, there in the mystery of God is there in the mystery of the threefold Godhead. It's not three different God, it's, it's one being. It's his, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. And it says that when Jesus came, it says that Emmanuel, God, dwell amongst us now. God, not some separate thing. No, God, he now has made himself into a little form, into a son, and he's called, now called his, himself Father, and he is now amongst us. And now we've been given greater glory because now his spirit, it says the inner being of a man is his spirit. And we have now the inner being of God. And now we have greater glory because the innermost being of God is now amongst us now. See, you thought, you think, we think it's greater glory that Jesus was there in the flesh with the disciples. But now he says, he says, I have to go because you will do greater than I. He had to go so he can bring a greater form of himself now in us, that he would be with us 24-7 with us, and we would be with him wherever we go, wherever he goes, that we would be 24-7. The disciples at times left Jesus, went to go get bread. Was Jesus with them? No. But now when we go to get bread at the store, Jesus is with us. Now when we come to church, Jesus is with us. Now when we leave church, Jesus is with us. We don't have to come to a temple anymore to receive Jesus. He is now with us, God, Emmanuel. This is the greater glory that we have. But in those churches, they grieve the greater glory that we now have. The Holy Spirit, the greater form of God, the innermost being of God, they are grieving Him. I don't want to be in a place where the Holy Spirit is only allowed when the man or the woman wants to allow it. The church, the Holy Spirit is the, is the head of the church because Christ is the head of the church. He is the cornerstone and the Holy Spirit is the head and the Holy Spirit is the cornerstone now and He is over the church. The shepherd is right here. He's amongst us. And the greatest thing about the shepherd, he, he, he leads us in greater ways because now he's in you, he's in me. It's no longer a man that has to say he's doing that or doing this, even though there's times because of our low discernment. That's why it says that there will be no schisms in the body. That's why I have made apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, so that there would be, and I've given these gifts, that there would be no schisms, that nobody would be out of line with the Spirit of God, that everybody would be living according to my way. And this is, to see, the fivefold ministry is a blessing to the ministry, to, to the people that are under the ministry of God, that they would not be led astray because uh, they, they have come in with winds of doctrines, come in unawares, and these are what prophets and apostles also do, is they, they take out the things that come in the church unawares. The winds of doctrine that all of us, a lot of times in the past, have been blown to and fro by, and some of us still are being blown to and fro by, winds of doctrines. But these apostles and prophets, these fivefold ministries, they root you in on the rock. They root you on the word that is really from heaven. They root you on the, on, the, on the real manna from heaven, and they get you stable that when the winds and rains would come, you would not be tossed to and fro. These are the gifts that we would not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Apostles and prophets, fivefold ministries, they, not, only, not only do they distribute, but they protect against wolves, and they are shepherds inside the shepherd. They are leaders inside the leader. And they are built upon the cornerstone and they do everything the cornerstone don't says and does. And they are just an image of the cornerstone, therefore being other cornerstones in a sense, images of the cornerstone. 
that other stones would be built upon them. And not being really built upon them, but really being built upon Christ because Christ is still the cornerstone and they're just the image of the cornerstone. So it's all really being built upon Christ. But because we see a man in a pulpit, because we see flesh, we say, well, I don't receive from flesh. Every man shall be taught by the Holy Spirit. But what if the man is teaching by the Holy Spirit? What if the man is being led by the Holy Spirit? What if the man is teaching? By so do you not receive now because you're still seeing flesh? No, but you're seeing in the flesh and you're not, you're not knowing that man by the Spirit. This is where we're at. This is the, the stone that the builder, builders rejected. It says there was, I sent a, 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 an owner, a master sent servants into the field and they scoffed at the one servant. Then he sent another servant in the field and he scoffed at that servant. And then they sent the son of man, the son of God into the field, a greater servant, and they still rejected him. Just as they rejected the prophets, just as they rejected the son, the cornerstone, now they are rejecting us because he said, if they hate you, let it not be trouble on you because they hated me first. And how could you really, how can a slave be greater than his master? Because if the master was hated, the slave will also be hated. So how, how can we expect to be loved by the world? Because to, be a, to, to love the world is to be at enmity with God. And to be loved by the world really shows that you're of the world. And Joseph was hated by the world and he's hated by the church. But if the church is in the world, they're going to partake in the same judgment as the world. So they will hate you as the world does. That's why the world hates the true church. That's why the, 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 the world hates the ones that are sold out for Jesus fully because they have, still have the world inside of them. And enmity with the world is to be at, uh, in agreement with the world is to be at enmity with God. So don't scoff when the other churches resist you, when the other sons resist you. Because they are still have the world in them. They are still in the harlot Babylon. Joseph came and bowed before him with their faces on earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. See, now they come. All the brothers come and Joseph is now the governor. He's now the, an apostle established as an, as, as an image of an apostle, as a governor in the land. Representing apostolic ministry. And now, that, oh, here they come because there's a famine in the land. And here they will come because there will be a famine in this land of the word of God. And they're going to come and say, and we want grain. And he's going to say, and then Joseph says to them, but you're spies. But he was really testing them because he wanted the, uh, the younger brother, Benjamin. Benjamin being the youngest. And God was showing me that the youngest, the ones who have childlike faith, not the youngest. It says, Jesus many times spoke about the child. It also spoke, like the one we mentioned, the childlike faith, but it also, Jesus had a child next to him, and he says, if anyone messes with the, I'm paraphrasing, if anybody messes with this little one, a millstone would be hanging around his neck, and he will be cast into the sea. But God was showing me, see, we tend, we think in a religious mindset, in a flesh mindset, oh, well, that's, you know, children, don't, see, don't, don't spoil your children, and that may be so, but really what he was speaking about was he was speaking about the young ones in the Lord. He was speaking about the children in the church that don't know any better. These are the ones who have been deceived and beguiled and bewitched. That's why God had to give the church, all those churches Paul because they were young ones in the Lord. They knew no better. But the Hebrews were acting like old ones in the Lord because they were of Israel and they were using all their knowledge and still trying to circumcise the others. And even, and even Peter, you know, Paul was even walk, was walking in, in, full, in his full calling and fullness and even the other apostles persecuted him. Even Peter and Barnabas and all of them, they all turned against him. And there was quarrelings and fights because Paul was really circumcising the bride out of tradition, out of all these Sabbath days that even the Jews were taking part of that were saved. And they even came against him because there was still leaven. And that's why they come against us. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed before him with their faces on there. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them. And that's how they see us. They see us as a stranger. They don't recognize this type of thing that God's doing. They don't recognize true apostolic ministry when they see it. There can be people even sitting in under an apostolic ministry, ministry and they don't even recognize what it is. They just know that there's power. They just know that there's word, but they don't recognize it. Then he said to them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers. See, the real church is going to recognize even who the real church is, even though they know that they're in error, like we said before. We'll bear witness. So Joseph recognized. They did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to the nakedness of the land. And then they went on and on and on about that. 
And eventually, he took in uh, one of the other brothers and imprisoned him for a, for a moment because really he wanted the other brother. He wanted the youngest. He wanted the young generation. He wanted the, the up and coming at the time. See, when God releases this, this apostolic move of God on the earth to the churches, the young ones in the Lord are going to be the most precious in that time. The young words, ones in the Lord are going to be the most receiving in that time. And we can even see or he, see here, I got a lot of scriptures today, but I'm going to just skip through some even t- right now. But we even see here how Joseph brings all the brothers to his house and they're all sitting down and he hasn't even told them yet who he is. And then he blesses, he gives them all food, he gives them all grain, he feeds their donkeys and all that. But then he says, he gives to the one child, the ben- Benjamin, the youngest of all the brothers, he gives him five times what he, would, what he gave the other brothers. And that's the worthiness of the childlike faith. That's the worthiness of those that are humble in the Lord is they will receive five times, fivefold. They will receive it. They will be under it. And they will understand it because they don't lean on their own understanding. We have too many people in the church today that lean on their own understanding. Because they've been under, in the church 30 years, they've been under old wine for so long, they have so much that has to be torn down and they can't understand. God will receive them, but they won't, they won't receive how greatly how this last generation is. Just like the Israelites when they went into the desert. The younger generation survived because the older generation would never believe. The older generation would not repent and forsake the old one, but the younger generation survived. The younger ones, the childlike ones, survived. Then in 21 it says, Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw. So then they start to be guilty about Joseph and about everything because he says, Where's your, where is all your other brothers? And they said, One's died and one's um, one's tr- still at home with our father in Israel, but then they started feeling guilty. Then God started c- to convict them. Therefore, for now our blood is required at our, at our hand. Genesis 43, 33 to 34, And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another, and they took, he took servings to them from before them. But Benjamin serving was five times as much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. Benjamin received five times as much. Then we go down to chapter 45, 3 to 11. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father live? Please come near to me. So they, so, so they came near to him. I am Joseph, your brother, who, sold, who you sold in Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves. And even at that time, I forgot to mention that they came, when they came to Joseph as governor, they bowed their knee to Joseph. Just like it says in Isaiah, they, they will bow their knees in the last day. And, they, and it also says to the ones that know that, that, that they are not apostles or the ones that know the works of the Nicolaitans, he says that you will also bow your knee. See, this is talking about, these are all shadows and, and understandings of one living organism that will, that will be the latter day reign. That's why it says the older will serve the younger because the, the latter will be greater than the former. The latter reign. The latter church. It will have the fullness, it will carry the fullness of God. We have many ministries and sects and organisms that have carried only one part of God and God has moved on. But this move of God will carry one, will carry the fullness of Jerusalem, will carry the fullness of God. All his attributes, his, 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 his uh, bells and whistles, his fruits. And that's also God was showing me about the coat of many colors. It will be the, it's also the fullness of God that will come upon the true children of God if they submit. Some will not get to experience it. Some will die off. Some will maybe around, but they're going to be in the outer courts, only enjoying the reverberation of glory, but they're not going to be in the Holy of Holies. But then it says in the book of Revelation that one day when the temple is built, when Jerusalem is built, the, the spiritual Jerusalem, that there will not even be an outer court. And all, everybody outside the court will all be Gentiles to the new Jerusalem. They will all be. So there will be a day where nobody will be able to play church anymore. There will not be any lukewarm. There will not even be a line. It would be either you're cold or you're hot. There's, the lukewarm will be done. It's going to be done. And God sent me before you to preserve a prostrate, pro- posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives. And Joseph turned all of everything he, his brothers did to him, everything the churches did to this one church, that he's now turning it. Joseph is now coming and saving them now. And, but, it's, but see, it took a famine. It took a lack in the land for them to realize. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there have been still five years, 
in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God sent me before you to preserve and save your lives by a great deliverance. A great deliverance. That's what apostolic ministry is. Great deliverance. And God was also showing me about deliverance ministry. People, they think they, think they have a deliverance ministry because they cast out the same demons every week. But God says deliverance is, is more than that. People need to be delivered from their wounds. People need to be delivered from their mindsets. People de need to be delivered from their desires. They need to be delivered from the flesh altogether. You can remove the demons, but they, the demons will come back if the flesh is not dead. That's what deliverance really looks like in a real apostolic ministry. We cast out the demons. Good. But now we need the flesh that... That, that has the lures for those demons. So, so what if you, that's not a deliverance ministry if you cast out the same demons. That's just playing like the sons of Sceva. That's just playing like, you just, it's just the same thing. You're casting them out, seven more come back, and then you're casting those, those out, and you know what? Then you start to realize, like the Bible says, the latter, later part of the person starts to be worse than the other. There's some demons that God doesn't even cast out because if he cast them out, they would just come back. There was sometimes people were manifesting and it, was, it's not time, it wasn't time to cast them out. Jesus, when Jesus cast out, he delivers. When Jesus cast out, he fills. And some will end up going back to the pit, but, he, but the apost real apostolic ministry fills the people. He doesn't just empty them out. But we are continuing to be emptied out because this is not a one-day thing. We think this is a one-day thing. We get saved. We're born again. Now we're free from all sin and all that. No, there is still flesh that needs to die in you. It's a road of deliverance. And we need deliverers from Zion to come and deliver us and take us through the process of deliverance, wounds. So many of us have, think we've been in the church 30 years. Well, guess what? Some of the people that have been in the church for so long have the most wounds and the most hurts. And I've even developed new ones. And I've even developed new, wine, new, new mindsets because of false doctrine. And here is the deliverance ministry, the apostolic ministry, the, the prophetic ministry, the fivefold are coming to deliver us and keep us delivered and keep us until the day. They keep us in remaining until the day. They keep us enduring until the day that Jesus comes back. That's what many are preaching. I see on Facebook, many are preaching, oh, you, be, you, be, they're still sinning. This one's still sinning, but you're still sinning too. Look at all the doctrines you're fornicating. Look at the jealousy in your heart. Look at, the, look at the offenses you have with people that have hurt you. Yeah, they may got offended with you because of Jesus inside of you, but that doesn't mean you get offended with them. And they think they're so delivered from sin, but they're the ones that are most hurt and most, they have sometimes more sin than the ones they call out, even the legalists. But God has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of his, all his house and ruler throughout the land of Egypt. See, God, the, the Pharaoh has made him a father. See, Pharaoh was the king and just like Jesus is the king, he also has kings and priests in his dwelling. He has kings and priests in his church that rule, that, 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 that are, and God also has shown me that there's kings and priests, apostles and prophets, kings, apostles and priests, uh, prophets. A lot of the times the priest was, was an image of the prophet, and a lot of the times the king, because the king governs, is also, and it was the king and the priest in the old days that actually ruled the lands when, it was, when there was no when there was no fivefold ministry, when there was no Nehemiah, when it was none of this, they were ruling the land, the king and the priest. Hurry, go up to my father, say to them, thus say your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all of Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. And Goshen is the place where the Israelites dwelled when, the fam when, when uh, pestilence came, when the seven plagues came, they were hidden in Goshen. And just like God said to the, Jesus said to the one church in the book of Revelation, I will keep you hidden from the time of trying to, on the inhabitants of the world. There is a land of Gosha that only this ministry, that, that only the tribe of Joseph can lead the other tribes out into to be protected. There's going to be some that go through this tribulation and they will be, they, they're going to be, there's going to be people that are, that may be harmed, that may be persecuted, that may die as martyrs, but then there's going to be those that endure and are, and are protected we see that with, when it comes to when he talks to the seven churches as well. And you shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And I will provide lest your household and all that you have come to poverty. And there shall be five years of famine. Behold your eyes and your eyes of your brother Benjamin. See that it is my mouth that speaks to you. Eyes of your brother Benjamin. See, see, Benjamin was the first one to see Joseph, the youngest one, the childlike one. The child of the Lord, the one who is not, has not leaned on his own understanding, has, has now seen, and most of us have now seen the apostolic ministry because 
we have not had our own understanding. We've been looking for the real thing without putting on, dressing ourselves in other doctrines and, and giving in to Jezebel's teaching. We've seen Jezebel's teaching. We've seen all these things, and now God has brought us to real apostolic truth teaching from, from heaven. Only the, only the childlike can see what comes from heaven. And only the, the religious ones can only see what comes from earth. Behold your eyes, and your eyes of your brother Benjamin. See, it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father out of all the glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen. You shall hurry and bring my father down. Then they went up into Egypt, this is 25 now, and came to the land of Canaan to their Jacob, their father. And they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive. He is the governor over all of Egypt. And they told the church, Jacob, right? He is the governor. This is the real apostles. This is the real ministry. And there will be a day of real revealing where the church will really see. This is your future. This is your future, that there will be a mass exile out of the religious system. And people will see the real ministry of God. They will really see the woman with the 12 stars coming out of the wilderness. And the wilderness is the hidden place. And Joseph was thrown into a ditch in the wilderness. And they will, they will come out of the wilderness. And then, what? The Israelites came out of the wilderness and into the promised land to conquer. And they were seen by all the cities. Jericho, all the cities. They took them city by city and giants were their bread. And they were seen they were, because they were conquering. And they were conquering to conquer like the one on the white horse that conquers to conquer. This is, the, this is the, the last move of God. This is our future. But then when they told him all the words which Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts when Joseph had sent to carry and the spirit of Jacob, their father revived. See, Jacob revived. The church revived. Jacob being a shadow of Israel and Israel being a shadow of the church. The, the church revived. Jacob revived when he heard that Joseph was governor. And it will be that, that this revival will come when the government of God is established and seen amongst all men. That it will be lifted up like the woman with the 12 stars and all will see her in her glory. And they will come. They will eat. I will go and see him before I die. That's what then he says that. Genesis 46, then God spoke to Jacob. And said, Jacob, Jacob, he said, here I am. So he said, I am God, the Father, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation there. And I will go down with you in Egypt. I will make a great nation in the world. And it also says, then, then God, in the book of Revelation, then God took over the kingdoms of the world with the, kingdoms of, with the kingdom of God. And I will go down to you in Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hands on your eyes. His hands on your eyes that you would see that you would see the deliverance of, out of Zion. Genesis 47, 5 through 10. Then the land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and your brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. If you know any incompetent man among them, then make him a chief herdsman of the livestock. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh that, Days of my years of pilgrim are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained the days of the years of my life. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh, and they went before Pharaoh. And I thank you, Father, that you would bless us right now, Father, that you would open our eyes. I thank you, Lord, that everybody in this place, everybody stand up right now and just put your, your hands on your eyes and say, Father, open my eyes. There is hope before me, Father. There is hope right in front of me right now. There is a future, a plan that is, that is going to bless me before me right now. I put your hand on your ears now and say, I cut off every voice from every 450 prophets that have lied to me about the future of this church, the future of the bride, the future of the children of Israel. We cut off every lie out of our ears right now. Father, bring deliverance in Zion right now. Cut us off. Circumcise our ears, Father. Circumcise our mind, Father. Cut us off from every seducing spirit, Father. From every lying spirit that says it's going to be over. Because God says it's not over. Now I'm going to read Revelation 7. 
And after all these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. And the wind shall not bow. And remember, before I finish this, it says, it says, um, what's it, it's, what, is, what was I going to say? Oh, the, the 12,000. 12, remember, is apostolic. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. And this is the book of Revelation, Revelation 7, if you want to read it. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed, 144,000 out of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And each of these tribes' numbers made up 144. And listen to the numbers of each tribe. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Natalia were sealed 12,000. Manasseh 12,000. Simon 12,000. Levi 12,000. Issachar 12,000. Zebulon. Joseph, Benjamin, 12,000. God's church is going to. His ministry will be known amongst all the church. And those that will not conform will become the habitation of the devil. And those that will finally come out of the harlot, they will be conformed to what God is doing, to this forerunning ministry, to the apostolic ministry that is all over. There's other, there's other apostolic uh, uh, forerunners that we may not even know about and there's apostles in each cities that are going to rise up and they will be known and they're going to come to the forefront and, and they will all come and God will take his sickle and he will harvest them all he will harvest them all if you're not excited you need to get delivered from some lies and I'm not saying that there's not going to be a last day I'm not saying that there's not going to be things happening on the earth there's things happening now and there's things that I believe that are even going to happen in this next year that are going to test people but God is only doing it for his people to separate himself a bride to show the bride who is not the bride to show who is who in the church the seven different churches are being revealed right now because what they do and what, how they bend to what's going on right now is going to show them that they were not of God that they were no, not apostles that call themselves apostles Revelation 12, and then we'll end. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Here's the woman that we've been talking about. Clothed with the sun, clothed with Christ. And the moon under her feet, the church. And upon her a crown of 12 stars. And she being child with child, tr cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and beheld a great red dragon. And I was also reading about uh, Benjamin and how his mother, his mother, he was actually called Ben Odai or something like that. Probably didn't say it right. Because of the pain that it took to birth Benjamin. And Benjamin being the one, the, the one that was special amongst all the other 11 brothers or other 10 brothers to Joseph. Having seen heads and 10 horns, seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars and did cast them into the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to deliver her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child. The woman with the twelve stars, the apostolic, brought, brought a man-child forth into the world. Man-child, because it's, 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 there's older and younger in the Lord that will be, un, be under it and they will be birthed out of this. That they should feed her there 2,203 score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his, mar his arch angels battled the dragon. It goes on to say how they battled Satan and the accuser of the brethren. And then he was cast down. And they overcame the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives to death. This is talking about the same bride that's in the wilderness. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down, having great wrath. 13. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, the apostolic church, the dragon. See, see, when the dragon is defeated, when the harlot is defeated, it says, it says uh, uh, cheerful to you, apostles and prophets, for I have avenged her for you. Because even the names of the dragon, it says they had the names of blasphemies written on their head. Because all those seven systems, the entertainment industry, the medical industry, we know about all that religion, they are all going to blaspheme God. The, God, the devil is going to use it all to come against God and blaspheme his name and blaspheme the Holy Spirit and call things not of God and mock. And it's happening right now already. But they are mainly, they're, they're, they're going to, it says that they'll even come against the harlot, the false bride, and they'll eat her flesh and they'll burn her with fire. The seven, the, the seven, mount, the seven uh, headed beast will. But its main agenda is not to, come, to tear down the false church because the false church is doing the enemy's work. It's, the, it's, the, it's the, uh, the, the church with that births the man-child. 
the, the God's real church, God's real ministry that's unspotted, he's coming to war against her. And it says it right here that he might cause her to be carried away in the flood. And just like Shane prayed, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard. Now we are the standard that he is raising up. We are the standard. It says that the 12 apostles will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And here we are, the 12, the apostles, the apostolic ministry is now here to judge, is already judging the churches and bring it and not judging anybody to hell, but judging, saying this is not of God, that is of God. That's what it's called to do. It's called to show the good, bad, and the ugly in the house of God. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed and which came Keep, kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. And then it says that she, God gave her strength such as eagle's wings, that she would not be harmed and that she would now, and what is eagle's wing? It takes us up higher. It takes us above. It takes us overcoming. And we will overcome the dragon. Don't be worried about the dragon. Don't be worried about the beast because we will overcome. We will win in the end. He wins. And as long as I'm in, I'm in him, I win too. And the church will win. And God will have his church. If you say it's over already, you're a liar. Because it says that I will have my gates of hell. That I will have my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Is the gates prevailing? Yes. But God is restoring right now. And he's doing it like Nehemiah. Restoring the walls. Restoring the gates. And he's building the church up again into its full stature. And Paul said it won't be over until we have the unity of the faith. Until we have the, uh, the perfect image of Christ onto, a, uh, a, onto full stature. Onto a perfect man. And this is what the apostles and prophets, that's what the ministry is all about, is to take us into that full stature of Christ. And even now we're getting there stature by stature and, 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 and we're climbing up the ladder that God has put down. And we will come and we will come down from heaven as the new Jerusalem before all men. We may be hidden now, but we won't be hidden anymore. We may be rejected now, but we won't be rejected anymore because they will come on the last day and they will bow their knee and they will say, the five foolish virgins will say, and come to the five virgins that have oil. They will say, give us oil. And they will say, you ain't worshiping me. You got to worship the creator. You got to go to him and buy your own oil. And they will conform and we will be one and they will be saved and we will be deliverers and we will be saviors of the savior and we are here and we are established and it's happening right now open your eyes because if you're not seeing you're blind but be like a child today if anybody is willing god says if anybody is willing to be like a child is anybody's willing to forsake their understandings if anybody's willing to forsake their own thoughts god will show you god will show you it coming down from heaven like a scroll and you will eat of the scroll and you will declare in jesus name Thank you, Father. Amen.